Arm Brothers Resistance. My name's Officer Matty Thais. Officer OC. All right, today we're gonna go over how to how to be a real man according to the Bible. All right, for years uh, we've been taught how to be a man in Christianity. All right, so now after repenting as an Israelite and coming back to God's laws, there's a certain way to go about it. All right, let's open up with Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. And it said, fear God and keep his commandments. So for years, for over 400 years, we have not been taught how to keep God's commandments correctly. All right? And there's a reason why. Give me Matthew 15 and 7. All right? Because we weren't taught by our own people. This Bible is for the Israelites and for the Israelites' own. All right? But we've been taught how to keep the commandments or the doctrines of men by our oppressors. All right, give me that. Matthew chapter 15, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, uh -huh. saying, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth mm -hmm. and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Why, why are our people's um, hearts far from the Most High God? Read. But in vain they do worship, mm -hmm. teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. The doctrines and commandments of men, all right, are oppressors, also known as the white man in this captivity. Okay? Give me uh, 1 Maccabees 3 and 48. All right? It's because when, you, when you're taught the wrong way, certain, certain um, actions or certain behaviors come along with the way you were taught. All right? Give me that. First Maccabees chapter 3 verse 48 mm -hmm. and laid open the book of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Who, who sought to paint the likeness? The heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So in the book of First Maccabees this is during the time of the Grecian captivity all right so-called Edomites today so-called United States of America Romans these people took our book all right and sought to paint their likeness of their images so that's where you get the demonic image of Christ, Cesar Bogier, right. the false image of Christ, all right? What comes along with that? In a feminine type of spirit, all right? Men think that they're supposed to be pushovers. They think that they're supposed to be feminine, be uh, choir boys, altar boys. That's what they think they're supposed to be. Let's see what the Bible says, all right? Um, to uh, follow up with that, give me a 1 Maccabees 1 and 41. Because when you see these false images, all right, and the uh, oppressors, the way they're teaching you, you're going to already um, start uh, how, conforming. You're going to start conforming into their, the way they live their lives and the way they do things. Give me that. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Mm -hmm. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. That all should be what? That all should be one people. All right, so the Israelites, there's no way that we can conform because our laws are different from everybody else's. All right, read on. And everyone should leave his law. Should do what? And everyone should leave his law. You see that? That's what the heathen wants us to do. They wanted us to leave our laws. All right? And do what? So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Mm -hmm. Yea, many also of the Israelites consulted to his religion. Read. And sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. And profaned the Sabbath. So our ancestors, they put away the laws of the Most High God and followed after the Grecians. All right, was that down to 43? Yes, sir. All right, let's move on to uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. All right, so when you leave God's laws, you're, you're going into straight lawlessness because the heathens, they don't have laws. They have their own traditions, their own customs that they esteem to be high. But according to the Most High God, His ways are perfect. All right, give me that. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Uh -huh. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? So if you are following after the heathen, all right, you will not inherit the kingdom of the Most High God, because that's only for the Israelites, all right? Give me that. Read on. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, mm -hmm. nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Nor what? Nor effeminate. Nor effeminate. So that's the topic today. We are showing our men, all right? how to become real men according to this Bible. You gotta put off that effeminate um, posture, the way you carry yourself, all right? According to this Bible that we're gonna dig into today, you're gonna see how our forefathers conducted themselves, all right? From there, let's go to 2 Ezra chapter uh, 14 and 14, all right? Because as you learn your history, learn that you are an Israelite and that you must keep God's laws, you have to become a new man. You have to put on, put off 
those old spirits, those old things that used to uh, drag you down, all right? Give me that. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Let go from thee, mortal thoughts. Let go from the mortal thoughts. So if you did struggle with homosexuality, let go of those mortal thoughts, all right? If you um, had a spirit of fear, let go of those mortal thoughts. Read. Let go from mortal thoughts. Uh -huh. Cast away the burdens of man. Read. Put off now the weak nature. Put off the weak nature, all right? Because the Most High God, he's only dealing with men. He's not dealing with the fearful, all right? From there, let's go to uh, Ephesians 4 and 13. All right? We're going to deal uh, with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're going to use him as an example because he's the ultimate example. All right? Um, read, read what you got. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Till we all come in the unity of faith. Uh huh. And of, and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Read. Unto a perfect man. Unto what? Unto a perfect man. Let's just stop right there. Show me, what, is, what does it mean to be perfect? First Kings 8, 61. We're going to go right back. All right, so, so we're going to take it real slow. Just in case you're confused what it means to be perfect. Give me that. First Kings chapter 8, verse 61. Uh-huh. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God. To walk in his steps and to keep. His command. And to do what? And to keep his command. That's perfection to the, according to the Bible. All right, read on. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Uh huh. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. To a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Measure and the stature of the fullness of who? Of Christ. Of Christ. So, as a man, we need to stack up. And um, come to that, that same fullness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. All right? In order to do that, we can't have on that defeminist spirit or that weak nature. All right? Give me Mark 1 and 22. Now we're going to show you some characteristics of Christ. How he, how he was when he walked the earth. All right? Give me Mark 1 and 22. Mark chapter 1, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And they were astonished at his doctrine. Let's see why they were astonished at Christ's doctrine. Uh -huh. For he taught them as one that had authority. One that had what? As one that had authority. All right, so a man that has authority, he doesn't have a weak nature. All right, he's a strong man. He believes in what he's speaking about. He has confidence. All right, from there, let's go to uh, Mark 11 and 15. All right, let's see how confident Christ was. He knew that his way, his father's way was correct. All right, give me that. Matt, Mark chapter 11, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And they come to Jerusalem. And Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple. All right. So we had the wicked Israelites buying and selling in the Most High God's temple. All right. Making his temple a place um, where you exchange goods, buy, make it, make it into a whorehouse. All right. Read on. And overthrew the tables he of did, the money chain. He, he did what? And overthrew the tables of the money chain. All right, so that's that's in direct contradiction to the homosexual version of Christ we see today. The the, uh, the white, blonde haired, blue eyed uh, dude that says he loves everybody. All right, right here, Christ threw over the tables because he saw his people in sin. All right, read that again. And overthrew the tables of the money changers mm -hmm. and the seats of them that sold doves. Read. And would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. So Christ would not put up with that nonsense, all right? Not only did he overthrow the table, give me um, John 2 and 14, all right? It, it, he, did, he did a little bit more on this account. All right, give me that. John chapter 2, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves mm -hmm. and the changers of money city. Read. And when he had made a scourge of small coal. He did what? And when he had made a scourge of small coal. So he took some small cords, right? Tied them together. Tied them together. He made a, a scourge of small cords. What did he do with it? He drove them all out of the temple. He did what? He drove them all out of the temple. So Christ took that scourge of small cords and said, get out of the temple. All right, so we overthrew the tables. Then he drove out the wicked Israelites with a, a scourge of small cords. All right? So that's in direct contradiction to the false image you see today. But that's what's showing us that our forefathers were manly men. All right? From there, give me uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 21. All right, so we just see, uh, see, I saw that Christ spoke with authority. All right, he overthrew the tables, and he uh, drove the, the wicked Israelites out of the temple with a scourge of small cords, all right? Let's see uh, another characteristic of Christ. Luke chapter 19, verse 21. Mm -hmm. For I fear thee, uh -huh. because thou art an austere man. And what? An austere man. All right, let's see uh, what austere means, the definition. All right. 
austere, severe in manner or appearance, mm -hmm. uncompromised, strict, forbidding, grave, sober, solemn, serious. Seriousness. A serious demeanor, all right? That's what it means to be austere. Read that verse all the way through. Luke chapter 19, verse 21. Mm -hmm. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man. Right. Thou takest up that thou layest down. And reapest that thou didst not sow. All right, so that's that's something we should learn from. All right, um, give me Romans fifteen and four. All right, because we're going we're going through the scriptures and um, seeing how Christ yeah he carried himself. So if we're supposed to live up to Christ, we need to know what he did. All right, read Romans chapter fifteen verse four. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written up for time, read were written for our learning. So these scriptures that we're going through today was written for our learning. So in two thousand and fifteen. All right, once we come back to our true nationality, we can search these scriptures and find out how we are supposed to live on a day-to-day -day basis. From there, let's go to our forefather Ezra. All right, give me 2nd Ezra chapter 10, verse 30. All right, because the same way uh, Christ was, the same way all the prophets were. Because the Most High God, he's only dealing with real men. All right, give me that. 2nd Ezra chapter 10, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And lo, I lay as one that had been dead, Read. and my understanding was taken from me. Mm -hmm. And he took me by the right hand, and comforted me, and set me upon my feet, and said unto me, What aileth thee? Why art thou so disquiet? Mm -hmm. And why is thine understanding troubled, and the thoughts of thine heart? And I said, Because thou hast forsaken me, and yet I did according to thy words. All right, stop right there. So what's going on right now? Far from the Ezra, all right, um, he was visited by the angel uh, Uriel. Okay, so at this time, he is seeing a lot of visions, and it's it's getting really weary on him. All right, so to the point to the point he just passes out. Right, so he's having a conversation with the Mosai. Read on. And I went into the field, and lo, I have seen, and yet see, that I am not able to express. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Stand up manfully. Stand up what? Stand up manfully. Because he got into a state where he got kind of weak, but the Mosai God said what? And he said unto me, stand up manfully, Read. and I will advise thee. Then he'll advise you, all right? So you need to be a man first. Put off that weak nature so the Most High God can deal with you, all right? From there, let's go to Ezekiel 34 and 31, just to follow up with it, because he's not dealing with boys. He's not dealing with uh, women on that level as men. He's only dealing with the real man of the Most High God. Give me that. Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse 31. Uh-huh. And ye might flock. The flock of my pastor are men. Are who? Are men. The flock of God's pastors are men. All right. So in the last days, you've seen he is he is raising up his his prophets in the last days. All right. And we're going to carry out his will. All right. From there, let's go to First Kings two, and verse two. All right. This is when um uh after uh, at the time when King David was up uh, about to die. All right. This is his, some of his last words he said to his son King Solomon. Give me that. First Kings chapter two verse two. Mm -hmm. I go the way of all the earth. Read. And be thou strong therefore, and show thyself a man. Show thyself a what? And show thyself a man. Read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God mm -hmm. to walk in all His ways, to keep His statutes and His commandments and His judgments and His testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, mm -hmm. that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. All right, so David said to his son Solomon, be a man, and then he told him how to be a man. He told him what comes with that, all right? So let's see, was David somebody who was just, you know, talking about it, or did he live that his, himself? Let's let's go through uh, some of David's track records real quick. Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel, start at chapter 17 and 4. We're going to jump around, all right? Start at verse 4. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines mm -hmm. named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, mm -hmm. and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. All right, stop right there. Jump up to verse 8. Verse 8. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel. All right, so Goliath... So now he's coming out, crying to the armies of Israel. He's yelling out to them, read. And said unto them, mm -hmm. Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Mm -hmm. Am I, am not I a Philistine? And ye servants to Saul, choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. So Goliath, he's selling out right now. He's saying, who, who are y'all to, to come against me? All right, let's jump up to verse 11. 
Verse 11. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, mm -hmm. they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Greatly afraid. All right. So Saul, he was the king of Israel at this time. All right. But he's going against what it takes to be a man. That's why his throne was taken from him. All right. Jump up to verse 21. Verse 21. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. Mm -hmm. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage Read. and ran into the army and came and saluted his brother. Mm -hmm. And he talked with them. Behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to all the same words. And David heard them and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and was sore afraid. Mm -hmm. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches. What verse is that? Verse 25. All right, read. And will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Mm -hmm. And David spake to the man that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised, uncircumcised Philistine? That he should defy the armies of the living God. So David said, all right, man, y'all got everything messed up. He's like, who is this heathen that's going to come against the Most High God? David didn't care how tall, how great he was. He said, he knows who his God is. So he's like, who, who is this guy? Why are y'all tripping for? All right. Uh, give me verse 32. Read down verse 36. Verse 32. Mm -hmm. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Mm -hmm. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Mm -hmm. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. All right. So Saul saying, You're too young, David. You're too young. But David, David wasn't trying to hear that. All right, read. And he, a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, mm -hmm. and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him. And he did what? And smote him. So David went out and smote that bear. All right. Read. And delivered it out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Mm -hmm. Thy servant slew both lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. So David said it's nothing to him because he knows the Most High God was with him. That's how we have to be. All right? We can't be fearful no matter what the circumstance. All right. Um, is that 36? Yes, sir. All right. From there, let's go to Sirach chapter 47. I'm going to read down a little bit. All right. So, so David, he uh, gave his son advice. Gave his son advice on how to be a man. All right. Um, continue. Sirach chapter 47. Start at verse 1. Uh, verse 1, yeah. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. And after him rose up Nathan to prophesy in the time of David. As is the fat taken away from the peace offering, so was David chosen out of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. He played with lions as with kids, and with bears as with lambs. Slew he not a giant when he was yet but young? Mm -hmm. And did he not take away the reproach from the people when he lifted up his hand with the stone in the sling and beat down the boasting of Goliath? Mm -hmm. For he called upon the Most High Lord. For he did what? For he called upon the Most High Lord. That's what David did. He called upon the Most High God. The same thing he told his son Solomon. He said, that's how you become a man. All right, to keep the commandments and the statutes because he knows where his strength is. All right, so not only did he, he advise his son the correct way to be a man, he lived the same way. All right. From there, let's go to Job chapter 8, verse 8. It's very important that we know about our forefathers. All right. So we don't venture off, which we've already done, but we need to get back. All right. We need to we need to um, be proud of this. All right. Be proud of our history and our lineage. All right. Give me Job 8 and 8. Job chapter 8, verse 8. Mm -hmm. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. To the search of who? To the search of their fathers. So it is commanded. We must search out our fathers. All right. We need to know where we came from. All right. Give me a Deuteronomy 28 and 1, 15 and then 37. All right. It's very important that we know where we came from. Give me that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high 
above all nations of the earth. And we just read about that uh, during the time of David, during the uh, time of Saul and King Solomon. All right. We just read about that. Now give me 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, then all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now let's jump up to verse 37. This is why it's so important that we know who our forefathers is, because we should uh, aspire to be like them, all right? But in 2015, we could care less. And this is why we are known as what we're about to read right now. Verse 37, mm -hmm. and thou shalt become an astonishment, what? an astonishment, Read. a proverb, mm -hmm. and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead. All right, because the things um, that were held of high esteem, we don't care about it anymore. We glorify and folly. All right, we think it's cool to uh, um, call our woman the B word, sag our pants, sell drugs to each other. All right, we think that's cool, but we about to read in these scriptures that that was frowned upon. All right, give me um, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 4, and then Isaiah uh, 24. All right, just to show you that what we see today, no, that's that, that was condemned um, before time. All right, and it still should be condemned today. All right, give me that. 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 4. Chapter 10 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. When for Hanan took David's servant, and shave off the one half of their beards, mm -hmm. and cut off their garments in the middle, mm -hmm. even to their buttocks. Even to their buttocks. So he shaved their beard. Why was that so serious? Because the Israelites' customs, we must have a beard. All right, read. And sent them away. Uh huh. When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. They were ashamed because their beard got cut off, and their their behind was shown. All right. Jump, uh, now give me uh, Isaiah 20 and 4. All right. So you see there is shame in showing you behind. All right. Let's get another scripture just to back it up even more. Isaiah chapter 20 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. So shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians, prisoners, and the Ethiopians, captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks uncovered. Even with their what? Even with their buttocks uncovered. Uh huh. To the shame of Egypt. To the what of Egypt? To the shame of Egypt. But in 2015, our men walk around and they glorify that stuff, man. It's ridiculous. That's why we must search out our forefathers so we can learn how to be righteous men, how to dress righteously. All right, from there, give me um, 1 Maccabees chapter 14 and 9. All right, just to give you an example how our men dressed. All right. 1 Maccabees chapter 14 and verse 9. Uh huh. The ancient man sat in the street, mm -hmm. communing together of good things, and the young men put on glorious and warlike apparel. The young men did what? And the young men put on glorious and warlike apparel. So when you see us in the streets, yes, we, we have on warlike apparel because we know what we're up against, all right? We have glorious apparel. We dress, we dress like royalty because we all, all right? We don't walk around with our pants sagging. All right, that is not that is not in these scriptures. It was it was frowned upon in the scriptures if you did something foolish like that. All right, from um, there, let's go to Leviticus 19 and uh, 27 to uh, touch on the beard. All right, because um, our men, because we we are in America, we think it's cool to be clean shaven, uh, marring your beard, having it lined up. But the scriptures go directly against that. All right, give me that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 27. Mm -hmm. You shall not round the corners of your head. Read. Neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beards. Mar. Mar the corners of thy beards. All right. The word mar means to disfigure. All right. So if you have your natural line of don't cut into it, don't make it skinny, don't shave it off, don't do none of that. All right. From there, give me uh, Leviticus 21 and 5. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. Mm -hmm. They shall not make baldness upon thy head. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. All right, so you shan't, you can't shave it off completely, nor can you disfigure. Could you get me on um, the definition of beard? This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. He's going to read the definition of beard. Okay. Beard, a badge of manly dignity. Mm -hmm. It is a badge of manly dignity. All right, so does it say womanly, womanly dignity? A badge of manly dignity. All right, so it's important. It's commanded that a man has a beard. You're not a man if you don't have a beard. That's what shows you to be a man. All right, some men have, you know, great long beards. Some men have just a mustache. Whatever you have, you have to grow that because that shows yourself to be a man. All right? From there, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. We're going to read down a little bit. All right? 
So once you repent as an Israelite and get back to God's laws, um, you, you do need to know that you are supposed to be a leader. You're not just supposed to be a brother that shows up. All right, you you have to be a leader to go teach your people and get us get rebuild this kingdom. All right, and these are the qualifications and uh, aspirations you need to get familiar with. All right, give me that. First Timothy chapter three verse one. Mm -hmm. This is a true saying. If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. So that should be every man in his truth. All right, read. A bishop then must be blameless, mm -hmm. the husband of one wife. The husband of how many? The husband of one wife. Not multiple, but husband of one wife. Read. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, mm -hmm. given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, nor strife, not greedy of filthy lucre. All right, so apt to teach. You must be ready to answer every man. So that means you have to be studied in the scriptures. Not a striker. That means you can't be a hothead. You can't be ready to fight somebody just because they, they say something to offend you. All right? Remember, you have to be slow to anger. All right, read on. But patient, mm -hmm. not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house. No, one that ruleth what? One that ruleth well his own house. All right, so brothers, if you don't rule your house well right now, what should you be striving to do? You should be striving to get your house in order because it's commanded of the Most High God. All right, read on. Having his children... In subjection with all gravity. Mm -hmm. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, Read. how shall he take care of the church of God? All right, so all of these qualifications are commandment. You must meet every qualification, all right? From there, let's go to uh, Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. About to wrap it up, all right? So we, we learned a lot today. Um, how to carry yourself as a man, as some righteous examples, bring out some um, laws. Um, give me a Psalms 1 and 1. Psalm chapter 1 verse 1, mm -hmm. blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Alright, so after you repent, it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So what's that saying? It's saying once you repent, you can't be doing the same things you did before. You can't be around the same, the same boys that you were before. The ones that don't have jobs. The ones that play video games 24-7. Alright, you can't be around those men. Read on. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, mm -hmm. nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Uh-huh. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight is where? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In these scriptures. All right, from there, let's go to 1 Maccabees 2 and 64. All right. This is another, this one, uh, I like the first Kings, and I like this one. To show how, how you're supposed to be a man. A great definition. Read that. 1 Maccabees chapter 2, verse 64. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, ye my sons, be valiant and show yourselves men. It says, be valiant, be strong, all right, and show yourselves men, read on. In the behalf of the law. In the behalf of what? In the behalf of the law. It's the same thing King David said to Solomon, all right, that's how you are a man. That's how you're able to stand up against the devil and overcome, all right? From there, give me Deuteronomy 4 and 9. All right, we bring out a few scriptures today, all right? Now, if you don't review these scriptures if you don't bring them to your remembrance you feel what i'm saying and actually meditate on these scriptures it's for not it's for nothing give me that deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 9 mm -hmm. only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen lest thou what lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen all right so you must be diligent you must stay tuned you must be studying these scriptures because you will forget read on and lest they depart from thy heart mm -hmm. all the days of thy life but teach them, thy sons and thy sons' sons. Exactly. Just like King David taught Solomon, you must teach this to your sons, all right? How, and to your, um, to, to your flock as well, the people that you're over, how to become men. Um, last scripture, 1 Samuel 2 and 3. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Talk no more, so exceeding proud. Mm -hmm. So don't say, don't treat me like that, I'm a man, but you're not keeping God's laws, all right? Don't be a big talker, all right? Give me that, read on. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Uh-huh. Don't be a prideful dude. Don't be a boastful guy. Read on. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. Uh-huh. And by him, actions are weighed. All right. Um, with that, we say shalom. Shalom. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC 
will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.